Hi, welcome to the Big Bear Homestead. And this week, in our Predator Control on the Homestead series, we're going to talk about army worms. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the army worm. Now, this is definitely a major predator from the insect world. He will, he's not very picky about what he goes after. This is the guy that can have an, an effect on your homestead from garden to livestock. So, now that we've kind of scared you a little bit, let's get into learning about this vicious enemy. Okay, so we're going to be talking about the army worms. Now, these guys are an extreme predator for you and I, for homesteaders, for people that live in a neighborhood. <clears throat> These guys are vicious. So we have to know our enemy in order to be able to combat our enemy. So let's start with the egg. All right, their eggs are usually laid in big fluffy clumps on the leaves of your plants. Okay, now, they're very, very tiny, like 0.4 millimeters and 0.3 millimeters, like 0.3 millimeters tall and 0.4 millimeters wide, something like that. <clears throat> now, they'll lay these eggs on your leaves in them big fluffy bunches in groups of anywhere to 100 to 200 eggs in a bunch. Okay, so that's a lot of eggs. Now... This guy go, goes through a complete metamorphosis. So you'll have egg, larva, pupa, moth. Okay? So we've talked about the egg. Let's talk about the larva. Okay? Now, the larva can change his appearance throughout his life cycle. Um, but usually they're green or brown with white stripes along the sides. They range in size from 1.7 to 34.2 millimeters. Okay? Now, when they go into the pupa stage, they will wrap themselves in a cocoon. That's basically what they're doing. They're going in their cocoon. The pupa stage is when the larvae go into the cocoon and they start their complete metamorphosis where they change from worm to moth. Now, their cocoon is... Um, more of a red color, okay? And they'll put these cocoons right up underneath the surface of the ground. So they'll burrow down in the ground a little bit, build their cocoon, and blammo, do it. Now, once they hatch out of the cocoon, they're the moth. Now, the moths are a grayish brown in color. And have a wig span of about 32 to 40 millimeters. The wings generally have white spots on them and the tips on the tips and near the center of the wings. So the white spots are usually at the tip or near the center of the wings. Okay, so now we know how to identify the army worm. Let's talk a little bit about his life cycle. All right, so let's talk about the life cycle of the army worm, okay? Let's start in the springtime. <clears throat> so in the springtime, the moths that survived over winter, when they come out, they automatically just start laying eggs, okay? Now, they remember, they lay these eggs in the clusters of about 100 to 200. Well, in about five to 10 days, these eggs hatch. Now, over the next several weeks, the larva will eat and eat and eat and eat. And did I tell you that they'll eat? They have just a huge appetite. They'll eat and they'll eat and they'll eat and they'll grow. Okay? And then when they, when it's time, over the, and again, <clears throat> excuse me, they do this over the next, over several weeks. And when it's time, they'll burrow into the ground, build their cocoon, and go into their 
metamorphosis. And then in about 10 days, once their cocoon is done, and they it takes them about 10 days to complete their metamorphosis, they will come out as a full-grown moth. They will mate and continue the cycle all over again. Now, moths will continue to lay the eggs up until it gets cold. Okay? Now, in some regions like deep south <laughs> they overwinter very well sometimes if if even at the deep south if we don't have much of a winter or even in deeper south where our friends are at um th it'll just continue there's there's really no stopping the process their their life cycle moss will mate lay eggs and it'll continue okay now, the cold kills them. So as you go further north, there's more of an interruption in their life cycle. Okay? So the farther south you go, the more of an infestation and more likely you will, ha you will have the chance to do battle with the army worm. Okay? So, now that we've talked about the life cycle... Let's talk about some signs. What does it look like when you got them? Let's talk about the damage that they do. All right. So remember when we first started this video and I said that the army worm was a huge predator for the homesteader? Um, and remember when I said that he would have an effect from vegetable garden to livestock? Okay, well, here is why. When the army worm hatches out of his egg remember i said he's the larva is eat 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 eating okay and they eat just about everything they don't care <clears throat> they'll eat turf grasses pasture grasses vegetables stuff like that so in the early spring when they first come out that's when they're hitting the grasses pretty hard in the young seedlings okay and they're going to chew it down now, in your grasses, it'll kill it, and it'll also take it and start turning, um, making it change colors. You'll start to get discoloration in your grasses, okay? In your young saplings, you'll start to see with the, the leaves, they'll strip it down to the veins of the leaf. They'll strip, they'll eat all the, the fleshy green part and just leave the veins. Now, as spring goes into summer that's when they start attacking your vegetables they'll hit ones like tomatoes corn beans cabbage lettuce those kind of guys now when they're on your tomatoes or on your corn or cucumbers or beans or whatever remember how from back from the pickle worm we were talking about how it would uh drill kind of like a hole well, these guys don't really drill a hole. It's more like if you took and dug in with your uh, thumbnail or your pocket knife and you just gouged it real heavy, okay? Because what they'll do is they'll sit on that fruit and then they'll just stay in that area and just eat, okay? And another thing, just like the pickle worm, where how he was eating and pooping, these guys are doing the same thing. So you'll have this, that sticky, gooey army worm poop on your fruit as well so now that we know what damage is to look for how do we take care of these guys okay so how do we how do we combat the army worm okay this one is rather I don't want to say simple but in the most part it really is and this fits right in line with what I've been talking about with all the other predator control on the Homestead series when it comes to, to garden predators. You really need to build up a garden that not only is very fruitful and produces a lot of good food for you and yours, but you also want it to be a place where beneficial birds, insects, and other creatures want to come and hang out. Because the number one way 
to get rid of the army worm is by natural pre predators. So that's going to be you're going to want to attract your your birds, your wrens, your um, purple martins, your uh, robins, blue jays, those guys to come in and, and hang out around your garden. You're going to want your beneficial insects, your parasitic wasp, your ladybug, um, your minute pirate bug, all those kind of guys that are going to come in there and they're going to be like, hey, it's a buffet. And bam, they're going to take them out. Now, if you're in the deep south, okay, and you're concerned about you might just have a, a population boom at that time. Um, you can use some pheromone traps. That that helps. Uh, but you can also release the nematodes onto your soil. And these microscopic uh, creatures will come along and they will attack the eggs. And that will help get your population back in check. Now, I haven't said anything about commercial pesticides because a lot of these pesticides, they'll kill the army worm, but they'll also kill some of your other beneficial insects as well. And you don't want that considering the natural pre predators for the army worm are going to be a lot more effective than your chemicals will. So, again, this one falls right in line with trying to have a more natural garden. One where we, you don't use all of those nasty commercial fertilizers and pesticides. You want to have a garden that not only attracts you to come out there and spend time in there, but the beneficial creatures as well. Well, that does it for this week's <coughs> video on Predator Control and the Homestead Series. Don't forget to come back next week to see the predator that we're going to be talking about. Well, thank you for spending time with us. Thanks for coming by the Big Bear Homestead. And like always, have a nice day.